Okay, guys, let's take our Bible and turn to Luke chapter 1. If you have your Bible, if you don't, just listen along. Let's all stand together for the reading of God's Word. Luke chapter 1, we'll be looking at verses 26 through 38. Now in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And having come in, the angel said to her, Rejoice, highly favored one. The Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. But when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying, and Consider what manner of greeting this was. Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bring forth a son, and shall call his name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Then Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I do not know a man? The angel answered and said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the highest will overshadow you. Therefore also that Holy One who is to be born will be called the Son of God. Now indeed, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age. And this is now the sixth month for her who was called barren. For with God... Nothing will be impossible. Amen. Then Mary said, Behold the maid servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. You may be seated. Amen. The title of the message this morning is called The Power of Prayer. Mary was right with God. The angel said that she was called the highly favored one. Do you know that when you invite Jesus into your heart to be Lord and Savior, you become a favored one? You're a child of God. You're a prince of the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And you are a favored one of God. Now, God loves everybody he ever created, but he gives everybody a choice to reject him or accept him. And those who choose to accept him become a favored one among all the people of the world. Now, that's not many people, is it? Billy Graham said that even those people that come to church every Sunday, that out of that group, only about 20% of them are truly born again. And guys, only in, in every church, only about 5% of those that come every Sunday tithe. So out of those 20% that are born again, only 5% tithe? So it could be much lower than that. But see, if you are a favored one, the Holy Spirit of God lives in you, and He lives through you and empowers you to obey God and do what God has commanded you to do. So Mary was not perfect. Like you and I, she messed up. There are churches that actually teach that Mary never sinned. Chapter verse on that. Mary was a sinner in need of a Savior, Jesus Christ. And if you need, if you need help and evidence that that's true, come to my office after this service, and I'll give you plenty of evidence Mary needed a Savior. We even have evidence in the Word of God that Mary messed up. But see, the thing is, Mary was like those who are totally committed to the Lord. We all mess up from time to time, don't we? Even those who are mature Christians, spirit-filled every day, we still mess up from time to time because our flesh and our, and our human minds cause us to mess up. And that's why we need the Lord to help us, to rescue us from temptation and sin. And Mary needed the Lord. And she knew she needed the Lord. And when that angel came to her, she was probably praying to the Lord. She 
She was right with God. Now, when you choose to go from being a favored one, which is a born-again child of God, to being a highly favored one like Mary, you're like those that James talks about, the physical brother of Jesus in James 5, 16. And the old King James, it says something that that's, doesn't explain what that whole verse means, but it says the prayer of a righteous person availeth much. That's the old King James. Here it is in the new translation. The power of a person who is right with God is powerful and effective. Now that has more meaning, doesn't it? So when you walk with the Lord Jesus as first love every day, when you seek Him with all your heart all day, and you seek His will, you seek His direction as your shepherd, and you submit to His will most of the day, you are a highly favored one. Because why? God knows He can trust you. And when you are one who seeks the Spirit of God, and you are one who is used by God, He tests you. Are you going to be faithful? Are you going to serve me faithfully and say what I want you to say and do what I want you to do, regardless of what the world says and all their lies? What the devil says and all his lies? What man says and all his lies? Will you follow me? Or will you follow your own flesh or others out in the world? And see, when you follow the Lord and you succeed at the job God has called you to do, then you go to a higher calling, see? God gives every Christian at least one spiritual gift when you're born again. And if you use that spiritual gift faithfully, you know what he does? I've seen it a million times. I've been in the ministry since 1983. I've been a Christian since 1969. I've seen it over and over again. When a Christian is faithful to use their spiritual gift for God, to serve God by serving others, with that spiritual gift, he gives you another spiritual gift. It's actually a higher calling. And usually it's to be a teacher. And sometimes it's to be a preacher. Most of our chaplains that are here, full-time paid chaplains, they came in here homeless. They decided that they listened during a service. You know, when they first came in here, they, you know, mandatory worship. Oh, oh, no. I'd rather stay out in the cold and freeze my hunt off. Really? Instead of coming in the warmth of God and let him warm your hunt off? Now that's soul, okay? Soul is the hunt. Let Jesus warm you today like he did those chaplains who finally listened to the word instead of complain. There's some guys behind that pillar right now. And they're hiding from God's spirit. They don't want to hear God. But see, those chaplains decide to get away from the pillar. They decide to tune in instead of tune out. And they receive Jesus into their hearts. Some of them were already born again. They were just prodigals. They decided to come home to the Father. And put him first. I did that when I was 19. When I was 9 years old, I was saved. But I didn't put Jesus completely first in my life until I was 19. That's a whole different life, guys. That's when abundant life comes. That's when you become a highly favored one. And God gave me the gift of teaching after that. Because why? I got serious into his word every day. That's why. I learned his ways. I learned his word. I learned who he is and what he does and what he requires. And God says, you're ready to teach now. And then he said, you're ready to preach now. And then he said, you're ready to pastor now. And I said, praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord. And there, there were saints in the congregation when I was 26 years old and first started preaching. There were brothers and sisters there that knew the word of God better than their 26-year-old pastor. But see, I, I, they, they were encouraged, but to me, I, I've, got, I've got to be like them. I've got, to, I've got to learn the word, know the word better than them. I can't let them know more than their pastor. So I, I continue to grow as a pastor. And guys, you always have to remain teachable. So the day you die and go to heaven because God always wants to grow you into Christ's likeness. So don't be stubborn. 
But be submissive to the Spirit of God. Those chaplains began to listen. They submitted to God. They got into the disciple program. They began to grow and be faithful in the disciple program. They were faithful in the jobs God gave them to do. And then after they graduated the disciple program, they went into aftercare. When they went into aftercare, then what happened? They said, hey, I think God's called me to be a chaplain. I know one guy that, that wasn't even desiring to be a chaplain, but you know what? We need a chaplain. Our chaplains got sick. They couldn't come to work. So, so the, the pastor, the, our CEO, Pastor Butler, went to him and said, hey, would you, would you pray about being a chaplain? We think you're ready. And now Chaplain Devin is a chaplain. It took everybody some time to, to call him Chaplain Devin because he used to be just old, old Devin. And Charles used to be old Charles. And now he's Chaplain Charles, see? So, see guys, God may not call you to be a chaplain here, but it's, if you're born again, he's called you to be a minister. Just like he called Mary to be a minister. And when you're a highly favored one, when you make that next step of commitment to putting Jesus first, and you're a faithful follower of Him, a faithful servant of His, not perfect, but most of the time you're faithful. You're able to say to others, whatever I say, say it. Whatever I do, do it. Follow me as I follow Jesus, but no, I'm not perfect. But when I do sin, I will confess it. And I will tell you I'm sorry. There's a young man who came to me today and he said, somebody stole my stuff. And I'll tell you, if I find out who stole my stuff, that's something my mama gave me before she died. And if I find the guy that stole my stuff, I am going to pound him. They're going to put me in jail. I said, whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa. What did Jesus say? Okay, chaplain. What did Jesus say? Love your enemy. If somebody steals your shirt, what do you do? Give them your coat. So when you find that guy stole your stuff, say, hey, can I give you my winter coat too? Only a highly favored one will do that. So it's a whole different life. And see, what you don't understand is <laughs> that coat is not nearly as valuable as the joy, the abundant joy you get when God changes a life from darkness to life. See? Amen. You can get another coat. But see, guys, only Jesus can give that abundant joy that he gives. And guys, there, there is power in prayer when you're a highly favored one. When you make that commitment to go to that next level, you become a highly favored one. You become a person right with God and your prayers are powerful and your prayers are effective. And people come to you and say, will you pray for me? Why, why do you think they say that? Because they sense that you're a highly favored one. Now, can every Christian pray? Of course. Can a backslidden Christian pray? Yes. But see, until they confess that sin and repent of it, their prayers are not effective. That's a whole other sermon. If your heart's not right with God, your prayers are not powerful and your prayers are not effective. So, write these notes down if you're taking notes today. When highly favored ones pray, the Lord sends his messenger. Write that down for number one. When highly favored ones pray, the Lord, number one, sends his messenger. So the Lord sent that angel to Mary. Why Mary? Well, see, God had chosen long before the world was created where Jesus would be born, where Jesus would grow up, where Jesus would die on that cross, and where Jesus would be resurrected. He also chose Mary. So see, God the Father, Yahweh, had been preparing Mary all that time to be that mama for Jesus. Some say she was 12 years old. Well, she had to be a really mature 12-year-old, didn't she? We don't know what age she was, but many ladies, were, many young girls were 12 years old when they first got married back then. She could have been 15 or 20, only God knows. But the, the, the point is she was ready, and you've always got to be ready, guys. Because, see, 
God will pass you up and go use somebody else. And you'll miss that abundant life and that abundant joy. And God won't send his messenger to you. He'll send it to somebody else. There are many guys right now that aren't here because they left today. You know what? God sent his messenger to you this morning. Angel means messenger. Pastors, teachers of the Bible are called angels because they're messengers. Revelation calls pastors angels. And if you're a born-again child of God, you're a messenger and you're an angel. But don't get that mixed up with what the Bible says. You're not one of those guys with wings now, okay? God created them to be our servants. The Bible says that you, as a children of God, are higher than the angels in heaven. And they will be your servants, children of God. But understand that Jesus gets all the glory. And when somebody comes up to you and says, I have a message to you from God, or God told me to tell you this, you've got to know the word of God to make sure it's from God. Because they'll come to, they'll come to you and say, God told me this. And if you don't know the word of God, you'll fall for that. You'll fall for that lie. You got to know the word of God well. Every time a cult comes to me, every time I encounter a Jehovah's Witness or a Mormon or somebody from a false religion, as soon as they talk to me, I, I, I talk to them about Jesus. I talk to them about the scriptures. And boy, they just turn around and they run. They run. Why do they run? Why don't they want to debate because they know I'm going to win it? See? Because they can sense that I'm spirit-filled. And they don't have any assurance of their salvation. See? Ask one of those cult members. Do you know for sure you're going to heaven? You know what they'll tell you? Nobody can know for sure. Then you don't believe the word of God then, do you? First John 5, 13. These things are written so you can know that you have everlasting life. Ephesians 2, 8, 9. By grace we are saved through faith. That's what Mary had. That's why her prayers were powerful. By grace we are saved through faith. That not of ourselves, it's a gift from God. Not by works, so no man can boast. So if you don't know for sure you're going to heaven, you ain't going. Receive Jesus today. Jesus will save your soul. I'm God's messenger. Hear God's message. Receive Jesus into your heart today because one hour from now may be too late. We're not guaranteed one hour from now, guys. These bodies have an expiration date on them. And you might say, oh, I've got decades to live. You don't know that. It's a dangerous world out there. Receive Jesus right now. And hear his message and submit to it like Mary did. So, the Lord sends his messenger to send his message, but also to send encouragement. The angel is there to encourage Mary. We see that in verse 30. Look what, look what the angel said to Mary in verse 30. Don't be afraid. You found favor with God. So we need to encourage others, don't we, with the word of God. We need to encourage others that God is for you, not against you. We need to encourage others and say, you don't understand the awesome love of God for you. You can't measure it. God loves you so much you can never understand it. And his love for you will never change. God needs you to encourage others. It's not too late to be saved. I think God said to me, I, I think I've committed the unpardonable sin. I said, really? Then are you dead? What are you talking about, about dead? Yeah, because see, the unpardonable sin is called blasphemy. Or blasphemy of the spirit. And that's rejecting Jesus and dying that way. So it's not too late until you die. So just the fact that you're worried about it makes me know that God's working on your heart. You haven't committed the unpardonable sin. You haven't died. It's never too late. Remember the thief on the cross? He received the Lord right before he died. He didn't do any good works. He wasn't even baptized. But he went to heaven. Jesus said that. He got encouraged by Jesus, the messenger, didn't he? And God wants to encourage people through you. 
every day here at this place and outside these walls. Also, the Lord sends his messenger by relating the mission. Mary had a mission, didn't she? The Lord sends his messenger to send his mission. God has a mission for you. God has a purpose for you every day. Every morning I pray, I say, God, lead me, direct me, show me who to minister to, show me who to talk to, tell me what to say to them. Help me watch and pray for those opportunities to minister to others. That should be every Christian's prayer here today, every morning. Lord, show me your mission. You're my shepherd. Lord, use me. Peter, do you love me? Feed my sheep. That's your mission. Help those who are new Christians and help those who are growing Christians, Peter. You love me? Fulfill my purpose. Jesus says, if you love me, you'll do what? Obey my commandments, John 14, 15. If you love me, you will obey my commandments. That's how you prove your love for God, by obeying him and fulfilling his mission. Did Mary fulfill his mission? Yeah, because she loved him. If Mary was an immature Christian, she would have said, what? You talking to me? Go find somebody else. Remember what Moses said to God? Moses was blessed that he wasn't stomped out, smashed by God right then when he said that. But praise God, he's a God of mercy and patience and long-suffering and love. So he gave Moses a break. So it's important that we seek his mission every day and fulfill that mission. Number two, when highly favored ones pray, the Lord does miraculous things through his faithful ones. The Lord does miraculous things through his faithful ones. And you might say, well, God's never done anything miraculous through me. Have you ever prayed for somebody and they got healed? They could have died. They could have died. Right after service is over today, I'm going to have a brother come forward and share with you the miracle that he experienced. He's coming through that door right now. And he just experienced a great miracle recently because somebody prayed for him. And God fulfilled that mission. God does miraculous things through his faithful ones. So allow the Lord to do that through you. We just read that a moment ago. With God, nothing's impossible, right? And you can say that the other way as well. With God, everything is possible. Amen. So you got to pray believing. Because I didn't think that was possible. I, I had Sunday school teachers in, in the church I grew up saying things like, the miracle stopped after the disciples died. And I believed that until I saw it myself as a pastor. I'm an instant miracle from God. An instant healing. An instant answer to prayer. The doctors had to write on the chart, A-O-G in capital letters, act of God. No other way to explain it. So guys, let God use your prayers. Let God do what only God can do. I want to read you a couple of illustrations here about a, a couple of guys who were favored ones, who prayed believing and God did great things through them. George Mueller is his name. He was a pastor the Lord used in miraculous ways because he had great faith in God and gave his all to bless others. As a young pastor... George saw so many poor children on the streets of Bristol, England, stealing food, having no supervision, that he and his wife Mary began an orphanage in their own house in 1836 with only 30 young homeless girls. After the Lord miraculously provided a much larger building, George was able to house 30 orphaned children, boys and girls. The house mother of the orphanage one morning came to George anxiously shaking and said to him, Brother Mueller, what are we going to do? All the children are dressed and ready for school, but there's no food for them to eat. What are we going to do? George has seen the Lord provide so many miracles year after year. Provision
provision after provision for the children over the many years in his orphanage. George calmly asked her to take the 300 children into the dining room and have them all sit at their tables. In undoubting faith, George thanked the Lord for the food and then waited with a smile full of faith. George knew God would provide food for the children as he had done so many times before. Within just a few minutes, a baker knocked on the door. Mr. Mueller! Yes, what do you want? Last night I couldn't sleep. Somehow I knew that you would need bread this morning, so I got up and baked three batches for you. Here, I'll bring it in. <laughs> George just died laughing, praising the Lord. Soon after that, there's another knock on the door. What in the world could that be? It was a milkman. His cart had broken down in front of the orphanage. He said to George, hey, can you use some free milk this morning? My milk cart broke down out here, and my milk's going to spool by the time the wheels get fixed. Can I bring it in here for the kids? George smiled and said, yes, sir, bring it in. We can use your milk for these children. George was praising Jesus with tears of joy as the milkman brought in 10 large cans of milk for the children. It was just, listen, it was just enough for the 300 thirsty children. Many lives have been encouraged by this true story about the love and power of God. Guys, we've seen the power of the Lord work in people's lives, miracle after miracle. A life born again is a miracle. Changing from darkness to light. No love to great love. No peace to great peace. No joy to great joy. See, that's what Christmas is all about, isn't it, guys? From bondage to sin to be free from that bondage. To say no to sin. Jesus in you is great power. And Jesus, through you as you pray, is great power for others. So allow Jesus to help you, empower you to live a Christ-like life, to be a highly favored one. And you'll have that same prayer, power, and great faith that George Mueller had. Here's another example. A guy by the name of Reese Howell. In May of 1940, hundreds of thousands of British and French troops were surrounded by the Nazi tanks at Blitzkrieg. If those troops could not be rescued, that would assure the Germans complete victory over Britain. Missionary Reese Howell heard about this and quickly gathered hundreds of college students to pray. They prayed all night that God would stop those German tanks. King George VI ordered a national day of prayer all over Britain. And hundreds of thousands of people gathered in churches all over England to pray for God to stop the Nazi forces from taking over. God heard their cries, and he answered. On May 28, 1940, the miracle of Dunkirk occurred. Hitler ordered all his tanks to stop. Historians cannot explain why Hitler did this even today. This gave the troops just enough time to retreat back to Dunkirk. Then there was a sudden cloud that covered, rendering airstrikes ineffective. I wonder how that happened. Jesus. Laymen began to volunteer their boats, and the normal choppy waters of the English Channel were said to be like bath water. Still bath water. God showed up to show the world the power of prayer and to give evidence of his sovereign reign over our world. So again, I tell you, when highly favored ones pray, the Lord does miraculous things through his faithful servants. Number three, when highly favored ones pray, the Lord abundantly blesses them. The Lord abundantly blesses them. And we see that in verse 38. How the angel said, God's going to use you, Mary. God's going to give you your child by the Holy Spirit, not by man. It's a miracle of God. See, he had to be fully man and fully God. And that's how the Messiah would be born. It was prophesied. So it had to happen. God thought all the 
us up before we ever create the world. So this is a God plan, and God has a plan for you. Not only a wonderful exit plan, but also a wonderful plan for you to live a transformed life, an abundant life, a victorious life. As you leave here as a highly favored one, a strong man of God. Are you ready to make that decision today? Why not? Don't let the devil hold you back. The devil just wants to harm you the rest of your life. The devil wants to end your life soon. Don't let him do that. Don't let him harm you. So many have heard me say these very words over and over, and they go back to their addiction. And some of them have died. And some of them were cast out of here because of how they came in here and acted in their addiction. They weren't their true selves. I knew these guys personally. They, they had a kind, loving heart. But in their addiction, they were a different person, even demonic. Guys, don't let Satan do that to you any longer. In a sermon attributed to Pastor Macarius in A.D. 300 to 391 is when he lived. He wrote this. Woe to the soul if the Lord does not walk within it to banish with his voice the spiritual beast of sin. Woe to the house where no master dwells, to the field where no farmer works, to the pilotless ship, storm-tossed and sinking. Woe to the soul without Christ as his true pilot, drifting in the darkness, buffeted by the waves of passion, storm-tossed at the mercy of evil spirits. Its end, listen, its end is destruction and death. Woe to the soul that does not have Christ to cultivate it with care, to produce the good fruit of His Holy Spirit. Left to itself, it is choked out with thorns and thistles. Instead of fruit, it produces only what is fit for burning. Woe to the soul that does not have Christ dwelling in it, deserted and foul with the filth of its passions. It becomes a haven for all the vices. Guys, we are promised by the Holy Spirit in Galatians 5.16, walk by the Spirit and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. Jesus assures us in John 15.5, whoever abides in me and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit. There is only one relationship that matters in this world, guys, and that is your personal relationship to our Lord Jesus Christ. As your Lord, your God, your Savior, and your friend. Let everything else go. But maintain that at all costs. And God will fulfill His purposes through your life. Your life is priceless to God. Your life is a priceless value to God's purpose. Seek to fulfill His purposes through your life each day. And God will bless you. You'll become a highly favored one. And you will live that transformed life. That abundant life. That victorious, joy-filled life. Peace-filled life. Love-filled life. Jesus-filled life. And His Holy Spirit will just shine through you. His love and His joy will just shine through you. And life will no longer be miserable for you. You know what? <laughs> let's, let's just say all the liars out there, all the phony churches out there are true and we're false. Which I know is not true. I have evidence of that. I don't have time to talk about it today. We'll come to my office and I'll show you the evidence that Jesus is God, the Bible is true, and we know what we teach is right here. But suppose they're right and we're wrong. Well, you know what? I've had so much joy and peace in my life abundant life, victorious life, that it was worth it all. But I know I'm right because I know God is right. His word is right. So guys, accept his word today. Don't reject it any longer. Act upon it by letting Jesus come into your heart, save your soul, fill you with the spirit every day, speak through you, love through you, minister through you. And man, life will have
has so much more purpose for you. Life will be so much brighter, so much better, wonderful. You know, the old movie that comes out every year, It's a Wonderful Life. It's sad they leave out Jesus. They talk about all the things of Christianity, but they, they never mention that Jesus is the only way to heaven. And I wish they had done that. But you know that, don't you? And the only way to have that abundant, wonderful life is to let Jesus come in today. And it will begin instantly. I've seen it happen. Totally change. You may not feel goosebumps, or you may. You may not have a smile on your face, or you may. You may not cry tears of joy, but you may. The fact is, if you have faith, he's there and he won't leave you. He didn't promise goosebumps, but he did promise joy. Because that's him. His joy comes into your heart and he will never leave you. So right now, guys, I want you to believe Romans 10, 13. Those who don't know Jesus, you're not sure if you go to heaven, if you died. Romans 10, 13 says, whoever calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Y'all say that with me. Whoever calls on the name of the Lord Jesus will be saved. And that's forever. That's forever. So trust him to do that right now. That's a promise from God in the Old Testament and the New. Right now, keep him. Hold that promise to yourself. Claim that promise for yourself. And let Jesus come into your heart right now and totally change you. Believe him to do that. Say this prayer out loud or say it silently, but mean it. And he will do that. Say this prayer. Lord Jesus, I believe you died on the cross to pay the penalty for all my sins. Come into my heart right now with your Holy Spirit. Save my soul. Take control of my life. Thank you, Jesus, for making me your child forever and ever. Use me, Lord, to be a powerhouse for you to bless others. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, if you said that prayer, raise your hand real high, guys. Come on now, praise the Lord.